great to have you great on to the be program. Here. Great Thank to you for what you're doing. Uh, it's an amazing message in this hour. Thanks. Thank you. Great, great to be here, and likewise for yes. what you're doing. Now you're a rabbi. Yeah. You messianic rabbi. Yes. I'm Jewish, a believer in Jesus. Uh, uh, congregations uh, right outside New York City called the Jerusalem Center and Jew and Gentile, but. Uh, uh, Speaking about the greatest rabbi, which is Jesus. Yes, yeah. and you were raised Jewish. Raised Jewish um, in a in a reform. Went to Hebrew school, reform Jewish. Um, when I was eight, I became an atheist. And when I was about twelve or thirteen, I said atheism doesn't work. There's got to be something here. I started reading everything I could. One day, I picked up a book called The Lake Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey about end time prophecy, and that changed my thinking. Didn't change my life yet. I told all my friends about it. Their lives changed, you know, but mine did you know, I said, Lord, I don't want, I said, I knew I had to follow him. But I said, give me a long life and I'll follow you when I'm on my deathbed. Because I didn't want, I thought when you follow God, you, so, you know, you give up everything, you become a monk and that's the end of it. So I made the deal. And right after I, I made that deal, I was almost killed twice. Second time, in a nutshell, I was, I was on a train track with my Ford Pinto, didn't realize, and the, I was hit by a train, by a locomotive train. The whole car went up like aluminum foil. Um, and I just called out to God as it was happening. The car was destroyed and I didn't get a scratch on me. So I said, Lord, can we renegotiate? <laughs> and so we, so, a miracle has yes. happened. <laughs> so and it's a very Jewish thing to do that. So I said, I said, okay, you know, I'm like, I'll accept you when I turn 20. So that was about eight months later. And so on my 20th birthday, not knowing even how to, how to accept the Lord, how do you do it? What born again? I just found a mountain because I remember from Hebrew school mountains with Moses and Elijah got to the top, <laughs> kneeled down and gave my life to the Lord. And that's how I came to the Beautiful. Lord. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And you, God is using you as a voice. You are trumpeting a voice of wake up where we are. The Harbinger, mm. an incredible New York times bestseller. You've been on Capitol Hill. Yes. Spoke yes. to government. What, tell me yeah. about that. A bit. Yeah. Well, it opened, well, well, they it opened up for me to want to speak at the presidential inaugural prayer breakfast. That was one. And then the other time is actually the harbinger. Someone was watching me talk about it. They said, there's got to be prayer with the leaders. And through that, the Lord opened the door for there to be prayer on Capitol Hill, a gathering, a service. It's the first time in like a hundred years that they, they're having this service. So every year it was through the harbinger. They had this gathering with leaders, presidential candidates, and they asked me to speak. So I've spoken there. I'm speaking again around this time, I'll be there back, you know, but speaking to government officials, members of Congress, people who are running for president as well. And there's several of them who are reading the Harbinger or, or giving it out. And actually every, every uh, member of Congress has received a copy of the Harbinger and the mystery of the Shemitah. Excellent. Okay, yeah. let's talk about the mystery, this harbinger. Tell me about this harbinger. How yes. does this affect us? Uh, God's spoken through to the nations through the Jewish people always yeah. throughout history. Mm -hmm. So what is a harbinger? <clears throat> harbinger is a, a foreshadow or a warning of things to come. And God gives warnings before he acts. And the thing is, the, the key is the harbinger is a mystery that goes back to the ancient, ancient Israel that is lying behind everything from 9-11 to politics, to the crash of Wall Street, to really everything that's happening since then. And goes back to the last days of ancient Israel, when a nation that had, it had once known God turned away from God, and now God is sending warnings. These are the harbingers. These are nine warnings or prophetic harbingers. And the nation disregards them, ignores them, and years later comes judgment. But the eerie, strange, or stunning, or remarkable thing is those same harbingers of judgment are now appearing to America. And mm -hmm. some appearing in, in the capital city. Some have involved the President of the United States. Some have taken place in the Capitol building. Some have taken place in New York. But they're reoccurring, they're manifesting, they are exact, they're precise, they're eerily precise. Nobody's trying to make them happen. No, nobody's mm -hmm. trying to be part, but people are, without knowing what they're doing, are part of it. So these are the warnings, every single one of them, all nine have manifested in America. And the warning is that America now is the nation that's known God God, but is turned away from God as Israel did and is now rapidly heading away from God. God is warning. God is calling. God is sounding the trumpet that we, if we don't turn back, there is calamity coming. Now you share about President uh, George Washington and what he said over our nation when he dedicated this nation to God. What did he yeah. say? Well, the, he said it was the very first day of America as a, as a, uh, a fully consecrated nation or a fully um, constituted uh, nation here. It was, it was the day of Washington's inauguration. He puts his hand on the Bible in the capital city. Then he gives the first ever presidential words. And what he said was he gives a prophetic warning on that first day. And he says, 
the propitious smiles of heaven, or the blessings of God, can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal order and right, the ways mm. of heaven that God has ordained, or that, that heaven has ordained. If we disregard God's order and the ways of, of God, then the smiles of heaven will be removed from, God, from this land. That was the warning. If America ever turns away from God, the blessings are going to be removed. Mm. Well, the amazing thing is that he gives that warning, and then he, he and the entire government go to dedicate America to God on the first day in, a, in the ground that's appointed to dedicate America to God. This is the consecration ground. This is America's dedication ground. Well, years later comes 9-11. Where is that consecration gap? Well, that's the thing. Well, not oh, you, the, if you, where was that? It was in, in the capital city. The capital city wasn't Washington, D.C., didn't exist. It was New York City. That was the capital. Mm. Where? Lower Manhattan. Where exactly? America was consecrated to God. Its consecration ground is ground zero. The ancient, mm. ancient mystery. This is one of the things in the Harbinger. But the ancient mystery is that when God is warning the nation or shaking the nation, that the destruction returns to the ground where America was, where the nation mm. was dedicated to God. Well, that happened to Israel. Israel, it happened to mm. America. That is our consecration ground. The, the message is return America. This is, I have remembered those prayers. Return, you have fallen, you have, you have descended so far. Come back, come back. And on that day, uh, a shockwave on 9-11, shockwave comes from that consecration ground and strikes the place where, Federal Hall, where Washington was sworn in and where he gave that warning of what would happen if we ever turn away from God. Puts a crack in the foundation of Federal Hall, where he gave the warning. Wow. And then all around Ground Zero, all the, all the buildings are destroyed or damaged or ruined, except only one is saved. And they say it's called the miracle of 9-11. What was it? It was the little stone chapel where America was dedicated to God that day. God spared it because it's like saying return. And the reason why it was saved is because there was an object that that took all the force of 9-11, and it was one of the nine harbingers, the sycamore tree. So the message of the harbingers is not to, to condemn America to judgment, it's to wake up America, to save America, to come back. To turn if, back to Yeah, if there, people say, is there any hope? Well, if there was no hope, why would God be warning? And what's right. the point of warning if we can't respond? But the war, I mean, the warning is a warning sign, I mean, that we are in, we are in big danger here. But the, the fact that there's a warning is a great thing because yes. there's a hope because God is trying to bring us back. That's, That's what it's good. That's good. Yeah. You talk in Isaiah 9 and 10 uh, that there was things that Israel had done to invite judgment and God kept warning them, warning them, and they didn't turn. What is it? What, uh, give me the parallel, I guess, between what Israel was choosing and what America is choosing today. Well, Israel, Israel, Israel had known God, but then they turned from, they began turning from God uh, to other gods like uh, Mammon, Baal. Uh, well, actually, there's a progression here, and that is the first the first god that they really went after away from was called Baal or Baal in Hebrew. It means Lord or Master or Owner. And the thing is that what Baal is, he was the god of prosperity. You know, he's represented by a bull, god of prosperity, fertility. So they wanted prosperity over God. Not mm. that prosperity is wrong, but they wanted their, their things over Instead God. Instead of God. Yeah. Yes. So what they did is they started confusing God. They, first, they started merging God and Baal. They mm. started they started merging God with prosperity. You know, they started mm. doing all these things and confusing God. Then they started, get, as the progression got worse, they started turning literally away from God and against God. So the first stage of apostasy is that. So America... Same thing. What was the first thing that, as America started turning from God, turned to prosperity, turned to money, the almighty mm. dollar? Well, the I'm God. thinking about the scripture that says, when you live in your fine houses and have your nice things, don't forget the Lord your God. So it's not that he doesn't prosper. He does. But when you get these things, don't forget who gave them to you. Yeah, that's exactly, that's the pattern. All these things are blessings if you receive them from God. Right. But if you turn, if you, when man makes idols, it's when you take anything in your life, anything, and that becomes the end itself. That becomes the object. That becomes the reason the why you're living. That becomes your God. That's mm. idolatry. And that is going to end. That, that will not last. So, so you know, Baal is the first one always. And they, so America starts turning to, you know, more and more to, you know, wealth and to, you know, and, and prosperity and the dollar and all that and materialism and turning away from God. Well, that's the first part, but there's another, there's a progression. There's almost like there's a, I would call it the dark trinity of, that mm. is of gods. The next God that Israel goes off after is actually a goddess named Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth mm. is the God, the goddess of, of sexual immorality. 
of mm. of um, of lust of and also just by the way destruction too so here the next thing that happens as they worship her what happens is the culture goes into immorality mm. and calling perversion. evil good perversion calling you know particularly sexual immorality goes into these things that's our Torah that you went from Baal to our Torah actually our Torah was considered to be a concert of Baal so you got them all together what happened to America? After the Baal thing comes Ashtoreth. Then America starts descending into sexual immorality. And you have the sexual revolution. You have marriage going out. You have, you have, um, you have uh, people living together without marriage. You have, you have serial divorce. You have people abandoning marriage, abandoning the family. You have all these things happening. Then you, ha you have, you have, you know, it goes from one to the other. Then you have homosexuality. You have all these things. And, um, you know, so you have, you, you have all these things. And not only that, but Ashtoreth is sometimes represented as part male, part female. So you have the confusion of Trans gender, gender. The, 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 and the confusion of it. I yes. mean, you know, it's a, and, and, that is, and that all goes together. Mm -hmm. what, what happens? Because if you're basically telling men, hey, you should, you know, there's no difference between you and women and women and men, mm -hmm. how can you have a family? You know, how can you have anything? Right. How, it breaks down. So there's no, there's no accident we're watching that progression. Well, the next progression, the last of this trinity, is of this other trinity, dark trinity, right. is called the god Molech. Molech is a god who they they went and they 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 took their children and put their children on the altars of Moloch and killed their children as mm. sacrifices to gain more because they thought that would give them more prosperity. Mm. So here it is. So so you so you so what happened with America is you went from you went from materialism, immorality, that's Baal, Ashtoreth, and then comes Moloch. What is that? Death, destruction, many kinds of destruction. But one particularly is the, the killing of the, ch of the children. So, so Israel lifted up thousands of its children. People say, well, how can you compare what's happening now? Well, America has lifted up millions of its children. 55 million children have been lifted up for one reason or one form or another. That's not God, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's on our hands. So not you, to mention abandoning mothers and, and families, abandoning the, the nurturing of children and leaving them for happy hour and for pursuits that are selfish, even those children that were not aborted, but the yeah. children that are here. Yeah, more as people, again, it's like going after career, going after this, going after self. It can be no, subtle. It could be, yeah, and, and that's another way of abandoning, that's another way, and, and the results are that. Or look at all the, the families where there's no father, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the results are destruction. The results are, I mean, it doesn't have to be in every case, and God makes up for that, but the result is jail, imprisonment, the rates of criminality, the rates of, of social disorders, all these things are affected. When you take God at the beginning, that's this is where it ends up. You, you immorality and then dis, and then destruction. That's what happens. So you went from Baal in Israel and America to Ashtoreth and to Molech. That is that is the progression. When we judgment. come back, I want to finish. I want to pick up here and carry on with the harbinger. Thank you. We'll be right back with more of what matters from the Word of God. War, crime violence and depression. The world has grown darker. We are in need of a savior. But when will he return? Are we living in the last days? Drenda answers this further in her complete teaching, Make It Count. Get the answers you and your loved ones are asking in this powerful teaching that is sure to encourage and prepare you for the future. You can get your copy right now for $5 to the ministry. You will get this message in its entirety, plus, as a special offer, you can receive Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's Harbinger book and the Make It Count CD for just $20. This book details the signs that you need to heed as warnings of the end times. Don't hesitate. You need to equip yourself with the knowledge of God's kingdom today. Go to drenda.com or call 1-877-894-3848 to order your copy today. Rabbi Jonathan, you've been talking about how we've departed as a nation, just like Israel did in Isaiah 9 and 10, how they started uh, going after false gods. You talked about a dark trinity. Yes. Just recap that yeah. and share, share with us yeah. where we are as a nation. Yeah, yeah. well, <clears throat> we're in danger. And the, the, the pattern of the harbinger 
is that the first, the first warning is a strike, is a temporary strike, a shaking on the land. That happened with Israel with an attack in 732 B.C. Happened in America in 2001 with, with 9-11. That begins the, the, the time of shaking. And the, to Israel, God was shaking to say, come back to me. Come back. But they didn't. They, they defied him. They made a vow saying, we're not going to come back to you. We're going to come back stronger without you. Well, that vow is in Isaiah 9-10. And that vow becomes the key to the harbingers. America started replaying. Instead of coming back to God, we've grown farther from God. It starts replaying this mystery and that all the nine harbingers come to pass. So just without it's going, uncanny. It, it is it's uncanny. uncanny. Share it, a little again, bit about it. Well, well, one is what is called the stone of judgment. And that is, it's in Isaiah that the people of Israel took these gigantic stones and they said, you know, we're not going to be humbled by this destruction. We're going to rebuild and we're going to come back stronger than ever without God. Well, it's a particular kind of stone. After 9-11, uh, the people of New York go up to the mountains of New York. They quarry out a massive rectangular stone. This is the biblical gazette stone. Same thing in Isaiah. Bring it back to ground zero. Put it where the, the, where the destruction happened. And they say, this is the stone. We're coming back stronger than ever. We, they have uh, leaders around the stone, and they're vowing vows of defiance. Nothing is going to humble us. That, that, that's just one of the harbingers. Well, after another harbinger is that of the tower. According to the, this ancient translation, is that a tower would rise up. The people of the nation say, we're going to come back strong. We're going to build higher and bigger. They build a tower where the destruction happened. Well, what's happening at Ground Zero? They build a tower that's going up. And, and, and that in, the, in the same way, and actually the tower, I'm, I know there's so much stuff, but the tower, the president actually signs on the tower words of defiance that basically in, our, in American prose is Isaiah 910, this ancient vow of destruction is on that tower so the so, same uh, the same uh, vow that isaiah in isaiah that the israelites made so did yes America. not only that the actual the the, the uh the day after 9 11 the leader of the senate gets up on on the floor of congress and he gives america's response and it's tom dashell what does he do he he quotes word for word from isaiah 9 10 the vow of destruction he gives the, the vow mm. of that brings judgment on the nation i mean and not only he he does that and then and then three years later john edwards running for vice president on the anniversary of 9 11 he does the he says the exact same vow of judgment mm. i mean it's, and they could not know what they're doing and so Every single harbinger, one is called the sign of the sycamore, that a, that a tree happened with Israel, that a sycamore tree has to be struck down, linked to this attack on the day of 9-11. A sycamore is struck down at ground zero, the sign of biblical judgment. At, you know, and it, but it goes one after the other, mm. after the other, after the other. So the harbingers, every single one of them, has appeared and with precision. They have not stopped. And the thing is that they, as America departs from God, since 9-11, we haven't grown closer. And everybody said, God bless America. God. We've yeah. grown farther from God. Yes, and become more defiant against God, even yeah. against Israel. Against Israel, against God, against the people of God. It's defiance. That's exactly what, what happened in the last days of Israel. So we're watching this progress, and rapidly so, and in our culture and all these things. But not only does it affect, you know, something like 9-11, it affects our well-being because one of the mysteries from the Harbinger and then became the other book, the mystery of the Shemitah, is a mystery that gives the exact dates of when Wall Street collapses that go back thousands of years. God ordained it. Yeah. it gives, he appointed an exact day that comes once every seven years. Guess what happened on that day in 9-11? Right after that comes the greatest crash in American history. Mm. Seven years later, it's a seven-year mystery, that on the same exact day, appointed 3,000 years ago, comes the next, the, the other greatest crash in American history. So this has been, a, this is a, a thing that has been affecting, will affect our well-being. You know, the, the ultimate point is America's been blessed because of God. That, yes. That's the thing, just like Israel was. But you can't, you can't fight against God and expect the blessing to continue. We're watching, you know, even what is, what is the beginning of the ending of the American age. And, that, and it has to be that way unless we come back to God. We have been defying God. We've been calling evil good and good evil. We've been warring against the Bible. Now the Bible's called hate speech. I mean, you right. know, you know, I mean, right. it's like good, you know. Instead you, of free speech, now we have hate yeah, speech. Yeah, the, 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 the prophet said, woe to those who call evil good and good, good evil. evil. And the same, the same people, the same ones who call evil good are like immorality. They're going to be calling good evil. So now... Christians are being are being more and more persecuted. Mm -hmm. You know, the word of God is being is being shut out, you know, or is being attempted to shut out. 
You can't do that. You can't fight God and expect the blessing to continue. And the warning of the harbinger, the warning of the mystery of the Shemitah, and right now we're in a, a, a year of the Shemitah, um, is, that, is that if we keep going this way, we're going to see the greatest shaking we've ever seen. And God will allow that because in mercy. I mean, you'll right, say, well, right. you know, mercy, he says, is there hope? Right. I say, well, there's hope. I, in fact, yes. if there was no shaking, I would say that, well, then there's no hope. Because if America keeps going the way it's going, there's no hope. Mm -hmm. but, but God is shaking, is gonna sh it has shaken, and is, I believe is going to shake America. That we come back, that those who will listen will come back, those who hear will come back to God. So we are living in very mm -hmm. critical times. Yes, we are. And you mentioned the three areas that Israel departed, that America's departed. I would see that we would probably need to return to God in those areas. Could you explain what do we do as perfect. a nation? How do we return? Perfect, repent? perfect. Well, one is, you know, the bail. That's one area. Prosperity, materialism. If, you know, I believe one of the reasons why he allows the, the crashing of the, of the financial realm is to get us away from that. And so, yeah, turning away from serving money, serving, serving you know, prosperity, serving this, you know, slave to this, I need more money, putting that God away mm -hmm. and coming back to God, who is the only true treasure. Yes. Se sexual ashtora, sexual immorality. You know, we need to repent of that. It says, if my people will turn from their evil ways. So it's not just, it's not just the world, it's the church too. Yes. But we need to turn away from carnality, from the, from what, you know, the things on television that would never have been years ago. Right. And we've gotten accustomed to it. We've, mm -hmm. we've grown brazen. Desensitized. Callous. Yeah, yeah, callous. Yes. And, and it's impurity. We have to, we need to be pure. God, the blessing is in purity, not in that. And then we need to repent of the of the lifting up of our children, Moloch. Mm -hmm. You know, to repent yes. of the sins of for America. We there has to be repentance. Without there's no return. You know, there could have been revival after 9/11 when everybody went to churches, but there wasn't because there was no repentance. There mm -hmm. must be repentance. If yes. we don't turn our course, we can't turn our destiny. Yes. So that that begins now. But regardless of what the world's doing. Each of us are being called by God to turn to him. You know, these are like the days of Elijah, the days of Jeremiah, that when a whole nation that once knew God is turning upside down, but we can still be strong within it. You know, if the dark is getting darker, the lights have to get, get brighter. Right. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So return, repent yes. and return. Yeah, in Hebrew, and it's the same word. Yes. Teshuva means repent and return. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so moms, what would you say to moms and families and dads about yeah. returning in that area? Yeah, listen, the covenant, you know, a covenant with, with God is, is manifested by the covenant of marriage that we have. And so a nation that is, is going away from that, it's, it's representing where we are with God. We need to return to that. You know, you know the covenant of marriage is the only, is, is the is the vessel that God gave. We have, we have a purpose and the culture is trying to tear apart that whole thing, to tear apart women from motherhood, women from marriage, men from fatherhood, yes. men from marriage. And it, it, just, it damages, it destroys the children. Yes. So it's, it's against life. So we need to return to God. We need to return to the family. We need to return to our covenant. We need to be faithful. The Bible says, love the wife of your youth. That's what I have against you. You've abandoned, you've been faithless. Right, right. You've been following your, you know, you can't have, you can't be following the God of self and have marriage work. It doesn't right. work. You got God first and then, and then God will bless the marriage. God will restore. I'll turn the hearts of the children to the father and the fathers to the children, the, the wives to the, to the husbands and the husbands to the wives. God will bring restoration, but we have to put him first. Good. Very good. Thank you so much, Sean. Oh, my blessing. My excellent. Blessing, excellent. It's my passion and heart yeah. to see moms, dads turn back their hearts yeah. to home, yeah. to their children, and yeah. to God, most importantly. Yes. Because when we do that, all the other areas come in line. Yes. Like you said, selfishness is not an option. Yes. It's selflessness what, and obedience to God, yeah. and His ways bring the peace and the joy everyone's searching for anyway. Yeah. In materialism, <laughs> yes. in sexual perversion, yes. in yes. offering their children yes. and abandoning yes. their children. Yeah. Put God first, as the, as the Lord said, seek God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Yes, thank you so much. Today, if you hear His voice, the Bible says, and you'll not harden your heart, but you'll turn to Him, He'll receive you. So I encourage you today, turn to God, and we need to turn back to our homes, our families, our marriages, our children. These are the important things. God started everything with the family, and I believe he's going to end it with family. He wanted a family. It's why he created man and woman. It's why he made, gave us the ability to reproduce and have families, and he wants you to be part of his family. So today, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you've got to do is call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says, and you'll be born into the kingdom of God, a new citizen with new rights, a new family. That's what God wants for you today. And if there's some area that's holding you, 
you back some area of mistakes, sin, issues. All you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. And the Bible says he's faithful to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and to present you back to himself, holy and acceptable. He loves you today. He's not condemning you. God's not mad at you. He doesn't want judgment to come on your life. But that's your choice. It's my choice. We have to say yes to God and his plan and his ways. Let me pray with you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just first of all say, give, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for anything that we've done to turn from you, for not even being a vocal voice in this time, Lord, where we could have spoken up and prevented the enemy from getting such a foothold in our nation. So we just ask for your forgiveness of that, Lord. And also, God, if there be any area of sin in our life, anything we're not doing that's not pleasing to you, we repent, God, and ask you to cleanse us from unrighteousness. And Jesus, we just call on your name. For those of you that aren't born again, just say, Jesus, I need you. I need your plan that you gave to me for salvation. I call on your name and I receive forgiveness, but not only forgiveness. I thank you for making me a new creation in Christ Jesus. And everything that's old has passed away. Everything becomes new today. I receive you. Thank you for receiving me as a son or daughter with your rights and your benefits of your kingdom, Father. And I just thank you for that. And I will serve you and follow your ways in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And today, I just want to thank my partners, all of you that have helped me to do this program. You're the one that makes it possible. And to those of you watching today, maybe you've never considered partnering, but would you like to join me? I would like to have you as a partner. If you join me, we are reaching and touching the world. We're helping those that are hurting, those that are hurting without God, orphans in different countries and nations. We're reaching out to young women that are in situations of sex trafficking and all kinds of things that are maybe hurting uh, today because they don't know God. We're reaching out with his love. And when you partner with me, you help me to do that. So I thank you, those of you that have done that. And I want to ask you, would you partner with me today? I'd love for you to join me in that. And I believe God will bless you as you help be a blessing to others. It's a law of the kingdom of God. What you give, you will receive. And so as you're giving and helping others, God will take care of you. He'll bless you. I believe he'll, he'll bless you financially. He's done that for my husband and I as we have been ser uh, serious about serving him and following his kingdom and advancing the kingdom. He advances our life and we want to advance your life today. So I encourage you to go to drenda.com. You can partner with me today. I would love to have you as a partner. So thanks for joining me today. God bless you. We'll see you next time here for more of what matters. And you are more of what matters to God and to me. Thanks for joining us today. The world has grown darker. We are in need of a savior. But when will he return? Are we living in the last days? Drenda answers this further in her complete teaching, Make It Count. Get the answers you and your loved ones are asking in this powerful teaching that is sure to encourage and prepare you for the future. You can get your copy right now for $5 to the ministry. You will get this message in its entirety, plus, as a special offer, you can receive Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's Harbinger book and the Make It Count CD for just $20. This book details the signs that you need to heed as warnings of the end times. Don't hesitate. Go to drenda.com or call 1-877-894-3848 to order your copy today.